Okay, here we are once again for Tips for Tuesday, and we know we're running a little behind today, but it'll be okay, I hope, uh, for each and every one of you. Uh, we're looking again at the uh, section there in Matthew chapter 1, verse 2, where it says that Abraham begat Isaac. Now, in looking last week, we know that uh, part of that was the reassurance that was needed and the grace that needed to be shown to Sarah. Uh, but now we're going to look uh, with that and going back to Genesis, uh, we're going to look at uh, chapter 21. Now, when you look at chapter 21, uh, you find right there that the Lord visited Sarah. So in that, we need to see this fact of the matter that the birth of Isaac was still a work of the Lord. Now, we know uh, that uh, she was 90 years old when he was born. Uh, we know that Abraham was 100 when he was born, well past the time of childbearing years. Now, with that, th that really does show that it was all about what the Lord could do, even in the most impossible situations. As we looked at in uh, Genesis 18, when uh, the Lord looked at her and said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? And, you know, there, the answer is nothing. Nothing is too hard for the Lord to do. Even in your life right now, whatever your situation is, nothing is too hard that the Lord cannot do. Uh, for you what is needed. But as we look here in chapter 21, uh, we find once again that the Lord had visited Sarah. And uh, it says, And he said, The Lord did Sarah uh, as he had spoken. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. So uh, we find there that she bore him a son. Not only uh, did she get pregnant, as the Lord had said, which was a marvelous work, uh, the Lord told her it'd be a son. It was a son. Uh, that son, we know, would be Isaac. Now, with that, uh, this list lets you know that nothing is too impossible for the Lord. Uh, it was a realization of the promise that the Lord had given them. The Lord had promised them this years before. And uh, then we find that the Lord had then re iterated that promise, giving assurance where assurance was needed, even in the face of doubt. Uh, we find that the Lord did uh, give them a son. Now with that, uh, we need to understand that God's promises are still able to be realized. You know, there may be promises that uh, that the Lord has given you about a, about a son, a daughter, a sibling, a mother, a father, uh, that you know what the Lord has said to you will happen and you're waiting for that time to happen. Let me tell you right now that the promises of God are still true. And with that, we can take rest in a surety that those things will happen. Now, as you look there in uh, verse three, Isaac was named in the obedience to the Lord. Now, as I was reading that this past week, I, I could not get out of my head something that will later happen uh, with Jesus, how that then uh, Joseph would take Mary to be his wife, and they would they would have this child, and they would name him Jesus or uh, Emmanuel, God with us, the Lord's salvation. However, you want to look at that, we find there that they were obedient. So was Abraham and Sarah, as they were obedient to this fact that they named the child what it should be named. Uh, verse 4, we find more obedience as the child is circumcised. Uh, this, this is showing once again the obedience to the Lord in obedience to the covenant or the promise that he's given. He had given a promise years before uh, that each and uh, as a showing of this covenant uh, that there would be circumcision on all the males. And this we find uh, that Abraham followed through with this portion of the covenant. We find there in verse 5 that uh, Isaac's uh, was a realization of Abraham's obedience. Maybe right now you were going through something and you're wondering, how long do I need to do this? How long does this have to go on? Let me tell you, be obedient to the Lord and in your obedience, the Lord will work a mighty work through you and a mighty work in your situation. Uh, we find there in uh, verse 8 that Isaac then led to 
worship. They worship the Lord uh, because of the promise that has, was kept with Isaac. Now with that, we find that we need to worship the Lord in all of his promises. Every single promise that he's given, we must worship him for those promises. You know, you've got a lot of churches, you've got a lot of people out there that as they go through life, they're just spinning their wheels. Uh, they're trying to uh, not cause any ruckus. They, they may go into a church building. Uh, they may sit there, but they never really worship. Let me tell you, the Lord is looking for your worship. And in looking for your worship, you are showing obedience to the Lord. Uh, we find with that then uh, in the same chapter, verses 10 through 12, we find another thing that has to happen. When the promise was realized with Isaac, there then had to be a separation that was to come. You see, there was still that one in the camp. Ishmael was still in the camp. Ishmael was a sign of his disobedience to the Lord. And we find with that, that in this giving of Isaac, giving the promise, the promise was realized there had to be a separation from the sin that once was. Whether you look in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, 4, and 5, or whether you look over in Revelation and everywhere in the middle, there must be separation from sin. If you are living in this life, trying to live a life of doing God's work, but yet still sinning, there needs to be a separation. And in that separation, you'll find that you are being obedient to the Lord. So as we look at this, we find that this sin uh, was the past sin that he had. This sin was the present sin that was still there. There was still this sin in his life. That, uh, that sin with Hagar was still prevalent. But in separating from that, we find that that sin was then forever gone from his future. If you have sin in your life right now, that is uh, just simply uh, harboring there. It's something that you've kept throughout your life. You've kept it when you were younger. You're keeping it even right now. It's time to get rid of that. Let that be separated from you so that you can live a life in the future that is totally and utterly obedient. To the Lord. So in looking at this, Isaac was a gift from the Lord. Isaac brought obedience to the Lord. Isaac led to worship of the Lord. And Isaac led to a separation from the sin to the glory of God. With that, I'd just like to say, I uh, can't wait to see you again. Once again, we'll be together on Wednesday night via Facebook. Next week, we'll be back in the church on Wednesday. Until that time, have a great day.